Okay, so the site is up to date now if you have checked it out. So we can go there. And in here, it's up to date as of yesterday. So I set up all the documents here and you have this management and all this. Wow. And uh, whatever we learned under uh, LVM. Okay, so let's get moving. Okay, so so yesterday we, we were looking at this here, and Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to set the priorities here. I'm going to delete this. Delete this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the priorities here. The priority is set to zero, and the backup priority is set to one. Okay, so let me go ahead and do all this here. And uh, we'll take a look when we reboot the system again. But, but what does that mean that we, uh, even though we are making a priority, but what is one will do, why it was by default zero? Yeah, by default, if, if there is one, it's going to tell the system that check it, and then zero is telling it to skip it. So when it was set to zero, zero, the system uh, uh, is not checking. I mean, the system is checking all of them. So one is uh, uh, one is there for the backup. So in this situation, it's uh, going to do the dump backup file, and then if it want, if it's missing the uh, file system, is going to uh, set it to zero. That means it's going to skip it. Okay. Then if we set it to one here, that means it's high priority one, and then if it's number two. 
it's a low priority. So let, let's uh, reboot the system with zero, 01 and then 0 and see what happens here. Then I'll explain more. Thank you. Okay, all right. So let me save an exit here. And then I'm going to restart the system. Brother Zafar, how often do you need to do changes in the FS tab at the actual job? I'm sorry, what? How often do you have to go change the FS tab file in the actual production environment or the actual job environment? You go in there a lot. You go, the, you go in there for a lot of troubleshooting, you go in there a lot. Okay, it's supposed to be skipping it. Such an account is misspelled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three M O U N T. The root file system, the root, uh, the root file system is supposed to be one, and uh, default. Uh, Good. Let me set this one here. Okay, uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna. I'll explain in a minute here. I'm gonna surprise some of the settings I'm not writing here. But is there any title for these fields also or now? For example, the first one is the. Uh, there is. Uh -huh. So the field one is uh, obviously the partition and then what type, what type it is. Right. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, this is the uh, partition and this is the mount point. And this is the file system, and uh, these are uh, set as defaults. Um, what are these? What is called defaults? What does that mean? Default is for this is a file system. XFS file system is default for this partition, and these two are priorities. Uh, field one is uh, for taking a dump file backup. The system does it automatically, and field two is a priority. You have three priorities in there. One. I'm sorry, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, 0 is uh, uh, the system when it reboots, it will not check for the file system. And uh, number 1 is high priority, and number 2 is low priority. Okay, so let me, give me one second here. Let me fix this and see if it's going to work. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. Okay, so this is a partition. One point file system. Uh, default, default. Uh, dump file backup. And uh, uh, I don't have any concern about dump file for the time being. Uh, you might teach us later, but. I just know that I don't know what is dump file means, brother. Yeah, dump file is it collects it collects the um, logs. Okay, it's still coming up here. No, give me one second.
Okay. So here. Okay, so this this is uh, the let me help you a little bit because uh, what is happening here is uh, when dump file is set to one, it takes a, a dump file backup. Okay, so what it is is uh, the system collects the health information and it it uh, saves it in the uh, SOS report. So if we, if we if there, there is a built-in uh, log system within this Linux here, I mean uh, within the Red Hat, that it collects this information. And uh, when you have, when you are, um, you know, further troubleshooting and you get stuck here, this information is generated when you uh, create a SOS report and send it to the Red Hat. So they look in this information here and they will further help you troubleshoot the issue here, okay? So this information may not be readable by you, but when it runs the SOS report, uh, Red Hat expands this up and then checks into this uh, system, I'm sorry, check into this file uh, backup and see what the problem is going on, okay? So there, there is a little more to it what I'm saying, telling you now. But uh, let me do a little bit more research here and see. But you never really have to come across this as much, but you have to worry about the priority here a lot. Okay? Okay, brother. Uh, but again, you use the one word SOS, which is new to me, number one. Number two. I'll show you. SOS is actually when, uh, when you're working on the system here, you will definitely get stuck here. There will be some issues that would be going on. You won't go now. But there may be a bug inside the operating system. So what you do is, I'll show you later in the class how to generate a SOS report and send it to Red Hat. You're welcome, Doc. Thank you. Okay, so we have SDA one, SDA two, SDA three, and SDA four. Okay, so what I did was I got rid of I got rid of that um, uh, LVM. Since we destroyed the LVM, we don't really need it here. But let me restart now. It should go back into normal operating system.
Okay, sometimes the answers are not easy to find. Yeah, but okay, now you see the system has put it into the uh, regular mode here. So let me let me just work on it here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is. Uh, Let's let's concentrate on the file system trade here. We ran into file system trade yesterday, right? Okay, that's a valid reason here. But I'm going to demonstrate what we have here is three different disks here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of these disks here, and then this disk has an entry into the operating into the FS tab. So what FS tab should be doing is it will it will, uh, during the boot process, it will detect what uh, the drives in here, and then it will go into the safe mode. Safe mode means uh, emergency mode here. So uh, let me go into CD flash. Uh, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, the folder mobile, and you can see mobile is using uh, SDC2 partition here, right? Okay, you all agree, right? It's using SDC2 partition. So what yes, I'm going to do is I'm going to create about 1,000 files here. Oh, there is already 1,000 files in here, okay? All right. So what I'm going to do is, for the demo purpose, I'm going to somehow, I'm going to write this command here. I'll teach you this command later. But uh, what will happen is this will corrupt the file system here. Okay. So dd input file equals slash uh, dev slash zero output file is equal. To Okay, and then uh, block size is uh, one k. Okay, when I ran this command here, what it did was it kind of corrupted this uh, hard drive, which is Mobile. Uh, no, not Mobile, but it kind of corrupted the hard drive, uh, hard drive partition. This partition is corrupted right now, okay, because I ran this command. 
I ran this command here. I took out one kilobyte of that uh, block size. And uh, when you run this command, it kind of corrupted this drive here, NBC2. This file is corrupted here. Hello. So what, what is the, uh, I know we corrupt in our cell, but how will we find out if some file, some partition or drive is already corrupted? What are the, are there any commands to see if there is no reading something or no writing something? Uh, what do we know this corrupted? Usually in the job environment, there is a, there is a monitoring team set up and they do the penetration test, not penetration, I'm sorry, not, but it, it keeps on uh, testing the physical hard drive. Okay? So those kind of jobs, you don't have to worry about it. In your most, most environments, you will end up being in a big place. Monitoring team and a site reliability all those comes under a different group. Okay, so if you are shooting for a Linux admin job, uh, you you rely on monitoring team to tell you that the following a hard drive is giving some errors, and you have to check it out. Okay, so what you could do is let me restart the system here. Uh, I'm going to make it one. Okay. okay, while it is restarting, brother, I'm asking a few questions, and uh, first of all, my apologies, I'm asking too many questions. No, I'm taking some valid questions here. If I'm, I'm wasting somebody's time, uh, I can ask you uh, after the class. But I'm, I'm asking because these are the general questions that come to me might be coming to somebody else also at the same time. Yeah. And, yeah. So, there, there are a lot of, a lot of jobs out there. So, for example, how do you find out if the drive is corrupted? How do you find out if the NIC card is not working? Uh, how do you find out if the drive is full? Okay, well, well, all those things, there is a monitoring setup, okay, especially for the production servers. They use uh, the, uh, the infrastructure is there as well as there is a monitoring that goes on. Those, those are different jobs than a Linux admin job because you don't need to worry about all those things uh, if there is a monitoring. For example, if, if you're setting up a system for the very first time, you set up everything on your side here, and then you give that system to the data, for example, database team. They do their work on it, and they install the software and make sure everything is working, and they'll come back to you and say, okay, everything is ready, then we have to move forward. In that, once you get the green light from uh, application team, what you would do is you set up a backup. Most of the time, backup team is some somebody else. Okay, so it's called storage. Storage team, you have to uh, open a ticket with the storage team, and they will look at this system, and then they will set up a storage on it. They, those people, they have little or limited amount of root access. They don't have as much access you would have, but they would have access to set up the storage. So they will use uh, their whatever so storage software and they will uh, back up all the drives and back up all root, uh, back, root, uh, VG, root uh, operating system and all that. And after that is done, it comes back to you again. Then what you will do is, uh, you will find out if the monitoring is needed. So once uh, you determine monitoring is needed, there are a lot of things that the monitoring monitoring would have. So monitoring uh, will have like performance, performance. So it includes uh, memory. If it's set to 70%, then it will automatically generate a ticket. Okay, then uh, 
this space usually is set to 70 percent. <coughs> if the disk space is, so the software is intelligent enough to detect the disk space is at 70 percent and then it will, it will automatically create a trouble ticket. And it will go to the monitoring team and they will log in and they will see, okay, it is really uh, at 70 percent. They will, they will try to clear up or they will, they will see if they could see, uh, fix the issue, if not, then it will come to you. It's a uh, monitoring card. It's uh, monitoring uh, network uh, performance. Okay, and uh, backup. And then it's also, then on the backup side, they are checking your backups are, these are real backups or not, okay? They do test the backup, backups are real or not. And then uh, what else? Uh, all the disk drives, are, this space is there, right? So this and all that, yeah. And then there is also called security. And uh, uh, firewall. So people, the network performance, this is another team, network team. And this is a backup team. And uh, this is the InfoSec. Every company has uh, InfoSec. And these are, these are white hats. They are uh, high hackers or security people hired by the company and they will be constantly testing the security of the, comp uh, of the, of the infrastructure, okay? Not just Linux. They will be uh, testing any kind of security, desktop, laptops, Windows, Linux, whatever environment they have. And also within the network, there is a firewall team. Okay, firewall team. And also within the network, there is a DNS team too. Okay. I'll show you how to set up a DNS, but more than likely, in your environment, you will not be dealing with the DNS. So you can imagine all these things are like big, big tasks that you won't be able to do as one person here or one team. You all be dependent on different uh, teams here. So, so there are there are so many things uh, I won't be able to demonstrate in this class, but you just have to understand how these things are working. Okay, if somebody's asking you to do all this here, don't take their job here. They're lying you, they're just telling you, uh, they're just putting, I mean, you know, the HR people, they just don't know, they just put together whatever they want and put that in a job description here. But that doesn't mean, if the description have all these here, that doesn't mean the resume you would have as a living family, here you won't get a, a interview, you will definitely get an interview. Okay, but, Hopefully this will answer your questions or uh, the questions that are coming in your mind, you know, because these are all valid questions. So how are you going to find out a uh, memory is full and you have 1,000 servers here? You're not going to sit there and go in there and uh, checking all those servers here because the monitoring team is set up here. Usually monitoring team is in India. They will monitor from there and send you the ticket here, okay, and then you will work through it. Okay, so, okay, sure. so what happened was now the system halted because, uh, let's take a look here. So give root password then. Uh, I 
again, let me reboot it one more time here. It's supposed to be giving us a message. Usually, usually you get a message here that the following file system is corrupted. Let me. Uh, can I ask you one more question? Were you troubleshooting, brother? Yeah. If the file is uh, corrupted somehow during production, and there's important data, how can you retrieve the data for the support? You go to the backup to receive that. I mean, I'm just trying to get my. Yeah, so what's happening is there is constant backup going on, and also there are backup dates. So if the backup is running like once a week, there is a incremental backup. It's not backing up everything here, only whatever the changes are made, those things are backed up. And a backup is usually storage. It is nothing but a huge amount of silos they have. Hard disk and disk and disk of space that is back constantly backing up here. But, uh, but also there are some limits that they go back like six months, six months old backup, they go back and delete those so that they save some space, okay? And then if, we, if you are as like an application team all of a sudden, you need uh, or you accidentally deleted a file, then you just go to a backup team and then open a ticket with them and they will restore it for you. But if you are running uh, on a real layer, the entire, entire operating system is backed up. It's called snapshots. It takes the snapshot of the entire operating system and saves it for you. Uh, this gentleman will answer my question, brother. Uh, for example, with the backup cannot be happening every second. So there could be a data loss if uh, this somehow fails right away and the production environment is long and you need to make it available. So, uh, there is a low chance of you getting a backup error because of the backup is very low. These are very efficient backup, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, since we're not being in this uh, environment before ever, I'm talking about myself. So uh, to be honest, I'm not working with backup myself either, so I couldn't tell you much. But most of the time, what I've seen in the environment is if they need something uh, restored, it's restored here. I never heard that uh, they end up losing a file. That's what the backup is. Got it. Without a And the VMware backup is doing the entire snapshot. Entire snapshot of the operating system. As well as the, the data disk and everything. VMware is very, very efficient in those kind of things. And I mean, if you are doing it in cloud, it is, uh, there is no chance of having any data in AWS. Without yeah, like you, you lose one file in 10 million files. That is acceptable, I think. For AWS, I'm telling you. So here you have like EMC here, all they do is nothing but storage. 
and uh, yeah, products and solutions. But anyway, all these things are running on Linux here. They have a, a modified version of Linux. All these all this equipment is running Linux on it. If you, if, it's, if you are running a VMware, it's running nothing but a Linux on it. A router, a Cisco router, it's running a Linux on it. The router operating system. Okay, so for now what I'm going to do is Okay, anyway, so usually you will see an error message here. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. It will tell you which which file is has a, a error message here. So what we're going to do is we know we have this file, NBC2, as a, a, we corrupted that file here. So let's run the FSTK command MC and reboot and see if it's going to fix itself. Okay, so we are in emergency mode here, okay? So I'm going to type SSCK, and then I'm going to type dev slash SDT2. Okay, uh, from Utah Linux, this is still working fine. People run that. Okay, so. So if it's an XFS file system, you run this command, dev slash sdc2. Resetting, I know 64 link reinstalling. Okay. All right. Let me run it one more time. I can why. And for why it doesn't exist in here. Okay. Let me remove. Okay, so it did come back into the regular mode here. Uh, yeah. So we are in one level three here. We do the use of an edge. Okay, so let's see if the files are there. Uh oh. Files are gone. Not happening. Hmm. 
Okay, so the files are gone here. I'm kind of a little bit uh, baffled myself here. When you run those commands, it's supposed, it's supposed to keep the files in there. Uh, let me let me run it on ext4 and see if it's going to keep the files, okay? Uh. Okay, so we do have files in the files here, right? Oh, which folder was that? I went in there to begin with. What did you have to see too? No, before I corrupted this file here, I did run into this folder here, right? And this folder did have thousand files in it, right? That's what we get, I think. Yeah. Okay, so when I corrected that file, it just uh, deleted all those files here. So we can we can create the files in this mobile folder one more time and just and do it again. This one here and see what happens. That's fine. Is this STC two also? No, this is three. No, do you talk to the uh, I think the command I'm running is wrong command. I, I, I don't know what is BS mean and the... Block size. <laughs> Block size is 1k and count is in 1024. So when we do is when we run this uh, DD command, that means we are copying the zeros to the STC1. So all the files shouldn't go away and have everything as zeros. All the files should be gone here. I said that's what this command does. It should overwrite everything from zeros and put everything in STC1. Yeah, hold on. Okay, let me just reboot it one time here. Okay, so so the file SDC one is not mounted. Okay. 
okay resize i know not valid we create one okay yes okay yes block bitmap difference yes 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 okay and let me go to this building Okay. Okay. So what the what SSCK file system did was it recovered the files, but XFS should have done that too. Might have needed a reboot here, but let's take a look here. Okay, give me one second. Uh, okay, all these files are back. So, FSCK worked, but the other command didn't work. Uh, I think uh, I'm missing something. I think I ran, ran the wrong command. So this is the command we ran here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unmount it and then do it here from the uh, you mount. Are you with me so far? You see what is happening, right? Yeah, brother, I'm trying to follow with follow you. Okay, let's create the file first. Touch file. So we have about 100 files here. And then I'm going to corrupt this. Okay. 
I'm going to corrupt this uh, file system. Okay, f slash sdc2. Okay, and if I go back into that, if I do ls, uh, zero records, if I copy the Okay, give me one moment. Cannot repair file system with a dirty log. To clear the log, mount and unmount file system. If the log is corrupt and cannot be replayed, you will have an L. Force log zero in to clear the log. And that is my XFS. Be aware that this may result in further corruption of data log. So can I take a five minutes break, a two minutes break, and need to use the restaurant, please? Yeah, go ahead. I will take a break of five minutes.
Are you talking, brother? I can't hear you anything. Are you talking? Yeah, I was talking. Can you hear me? I can hear you. No, not before. Okay. So the file system got rebooted, and then I'm going to... I'm going to comment this out here, okay? I'm going to try to run this from the normal uh, operating system. I have no idea what did you do for the last five minutes, folks. I, I thought you just... So I just rebooted it, and uh, I corrected the file system here, and it stopped itself when I rebooted it, right? Because it checks the file system. Okay, so now... What I did was I went into FS tab in here and I commented out. So what I plan to do now is I'm going to run the repair into the normal mode, run level 3, instead of running it from the emergency mode. Hello. Okay, so let me restart it. Okay, so SDC2 is not there. All right, so what I'm going to do is, let's look at this command here. So we'll run this command here. Uh, FS check. XFS check. And then we're going to run that on batch slash SDC2. And let's see what it's going to do. Uh-oh. Uh... Okay, so very five secondary super block. The file system has uh, valuable data changes in the log, which needs to be replayed on the file system to replay the log. Unmount it before rerunning the. If you are unable to mount the file, okay. I'm going to do mount hyphen A, gear function, H. Okay. SDC2 is not mounted. Why is it not mounted? Is it commented out in SSS? Yes, very good. Slash dev slash SDC2 slash model. Mount structure needs cleaning. Uh, just a side note, brother. What is that mean? The structure means screen. What does that mean? It just it just need to run the SSH repair. It's not running it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to find out the word. The word for structure means screen. What does that mean? I'm telling you, structure needs cleaning is, it's a, uh, you need to run this excess repair. Excess okay. repair, okay. The generic term is telling you that structure needs, but you need to run the excess repair here. Got it. Okay, so now, okay, maybe I need to, okay, run it. Okay. All right, let's let me restart it again.
So when you are doing this uh, troubleshooting, uh, you just get this output here and put it in here and see what comes up. Okay, partitioning error cannot mount. Okay. Okay, so uh, he has no idea. I don't either. Uh, so I can check it with all the links. Okay, hyphen n. Okay, we we could use hyphen n in here. Okay, let's try that. Mount hyphen o. Uh, remount. Rewrite slash. Okay, so. Okay, so XFS underscore repair hyphen N dev slash SDC2. Would have clean the uh, what initialize down for you directly? Mount hyphen A. Okay, let me boot into the full uh, operating system here in H6. Mount slash dev sdc2 moving. Now, let me run fsc on this. In XFS repair, XFS underscore. Okay, 
I'm going to go on to the internet and download the package here because uh, it may need uh, the extra package here. Give me one second. Uh, is it going to break? We have two kind of problems here. One, we are, when I set this as zero, it's not supposed to check the file system, but it's checking that. And then this XFS is not working. That's another problem. Um, let start. So I'm online, right? So I'm going to install so first one to do is when you type this command yum provides is going to go online and see if that package is available except as you can I should say, okay, I was supposed to take it, except I checked. 
So provide me will not in solitary, just look on internet. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what is it saying here? Utilities for managing XFS, XFS repair, XFS repair is uh, already installed here. So I'm going to see check. Okay, so give me one moment here. It may be a different name. Uh, which XFS? Okay, I thought that XFS is already installed in here, but let's see, I may be wrong. I think Windows, uh, what you call the well salmon by default comes with the XFS, that's what you told us, right? Yeah, that's what I told you. Then, uh, uh, is BC. The repair should just work. Let me try it Brother Zafar, I'm just reading this one of these lines. Do you think that we have crafted the file system? We need to install the file system? Uh, no. File system is there. Well, we cannot mount it. It says here. Yeah. This command should be able to fix it. That's what we are trying to get to. Okay. So find and verify super block using the internal block. Do a uh, file system in the management data needs to be repaired. Now the file system is open to the internal before the Okay, let's do have an L. Okay, let's see if it's going to work. 
do. But the data is not there. Data is all wrong. What command did we run to fix this one or what did it stop mapping? Hyphen L. Okay. CD movement. Let's, uh, let me do it without L. So I have to unmount it. Okay, now let me mount it back. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not working the way it's supposed to. So, but let me just copy down what we've done so far. Uh, so, uh, the SSCK is working, XSS is not working. So, what you did is uh, mount, remount, and you did this, and uh, Okay, so then what we did was uh, we corrupted this file system here, yeah, SDC1. Okay? Reboot. The system will halt. Um, remount into read write mode. Okay, this one here, this command. Mount remount. All oh, this. This is a command. You need to remount it. And. Uh, Don't try for no remote. I did the FS tab to comment out the affected file system. Reboot. Then, some, then run which command here? Then run this command. FSC. Okay, if this doesn't if, if this doesn't fix the problem then what are you gonna do? You're gonna do is open a ticket with the real backup team and they will restore it for you, okay? 
But uh, I was hoping this was working just fine here, but it's not. So let me look into it, and then we'll uh, catch up on this on next week. So now, for now, we still have about 15 minutes. So I'm going to show you how to run the DD command. Okay. Uh, Oh, but if I'm just curious, what we're going to do next week, there is a probability that I might be off for next week, mom. I came to Georgia to see my daughters. Yeah. And I might be, I might be taking them somewhere, but I tried 99% to be online, but there is a 1% chance that I might not be. So. Yeah, we're going to try, you know, setting up the passwordless connection and all those things. Okay, I'll try to be there, but if not, then I might bother the little bed or somebody in our group or bother you. All right, no worries. So, Jazakallah. So we're going to use the db command. What is this? Is this duplicate? Uh. So, what what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to duplicate the disk. And uh, there are multiple things you can use this disk for. Uh, the command for multiple things here. One is to uh, duplicate disk. So, duplicate disk means uh, it makes an exact copy. Users of db command. So one is a it makes a duplicate copies. Duplicates have exact <coughs> replica of the disk uh, down to metadata. Okay, then B is, uh, you could use uh, uh, to destroy, destroy all data. Okay, and uh, let me see what else. Uh, okay, so uh, and the C is uh, create create a um, large empty file blank file. So I already showed you how to create a blank file, right? Up here, if you go in here, we created a blank file and it doesn't have anything into it. Uh, we did I create one. Okay, so let me create one here. So I'm going to go into CD moving. I'm going to LS, and then I'm going to do DD. DD, and then IF stands for input file, and then we're going to use dev0. Dev0 is a ghost file. I mean, ghost is going to, is going to create uh, it's just a zero. If you go into depth folder and do ls, you should see zero in there, okay? Previously, we go into dev and then there was dev null in there too. Can anybody remember what dev null is? Uh, 
And it was a, like a black hole. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a black hole. And then what we're doing is output OF is output file. And then we're just going to give the name. Okay. And then count how many files we want to make at one. And then byte size. Or I'm sorry, block size. And then you could give it. You could give it 1K or you could give 500M. Okay, and then if you hit enter, what will happen is it's going to, it's going to create a file which is about 500 megabits. But if you cap the file, what do you see in there? All zeros. Yeah, let's see if it's going to show up at zero there. All right, it's a big file, so... Is there a file that's running anything in the last or something? We just got that right here. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that word. I could just maybe uh, run it like a less or so yeah. that would be okay. Okay. So for maybe a binary file. See, oh. So it's all. <coughs> it's all weird. It's all zero. Yeah. It actually is not displaying because we don't have this thing to display here. But so it's just a blank file. And isn't it called like a master file as well? Just to create uh, data because I read it somewhere on the internet. It says it creates a master file just for for load testing, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, what you look looking at is if you want to see how fast the data is moving, and if it, now you have this bank file, which is like uh, 500 megabytes, and you want to move around and try to move it between two servers, and that way you keep your mind, a size of 500 megabytes is taking 10 seconds to move it. So they will say, okay, that is kind of slow, and based on that, they will troubleshoot. Mm. It, it's, just, it's just the size they are they're looking off. Okay, so let's... No, just one, one quick question here, brother. It says a binary file. So yeah, binary binary file. Zero. Oh, okay. zero and one. Binary is zero and one. Did you explain that one? Yeah, yeah, but I, I have the idea what binary means. But when we say zero, so we... You also mentioned that we create a blank file, right? Yeah, blank file means it's uh, writing as a binary file. So we told the system to write all zeros, so that's what it did. So, so it won't be blank, but it won't be blank file then. It is a blank file. I mean, it's writing all zeros in there. Okay. I mean, no, yeah, you are true. Whatever the system is doing for system, it's not a blank file. For for humans, it's all junk file. It's zeros. And the moving said you could be using this to move around and check the throughput of the data. Okay, so you could you, you could transfer this file from one location to another location and test it. And uh, you know you need you need a file to move around, right? You just need a file to download from one place to another place and you don't really want to move around a real file. You could create a file like this and move it around. Okay. And then, so if you want to duplicate a file, let's uh, duplicate your disk C, the SDC2 to SDC1, okay? SDC1 doesn't have anything in there, does it? Okay, that has all these files in So let's do it the other way. So what you're going to do is, you're going to run the dd command. dd 
the dt input file is equal to we could use the dev slash sdc1 output file equal to dev slash sdc2 okay that's it what it's going to do is it is going to copy everything from sdc f slash sdc1 to sdc2 here but let's hope it's going to work you mean all the file, whatever SDC1 has, that will transfer to C2? Yeah. SDC2? It, it, it is actually not. It's, it's, it's like a thousand files there, right? It should be by, done by now, but it's going into the granular level. It's going into the metadata level and copying the disk duplicate. Oh. Uh, <coughs> it's going to take time here. So how much are these each? Uh, how much? What is the size of it? One is uh, 4 GB. Can we open another body and see what's going on behind the scenes? Is there any other command like that? Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, it's not showing now. There is a command called jobs. It will it will show that it is running in there. It is running in the background here, but it took it in here. So let's see D F S N H. Okay, S D. So if we go into C D mobile. Uh, Okay, hold on. Record, record in, record out. OGB copied. You know what, I think I did a mistake here. I think I'm supposed to unmount it. Unmount dev slash sdc. You're mounting again, I guess. One. You mount sdc1 and sdc2. Okay, if I do df an edge. Okay, so now I could run the command here, dd.
Okay. So if I mount it, it may not be the same thing. Let's see. SDC, SDC1 and SDC2. Brother Doctor, can you just do me one favor, please? Yeah. Can you scroll up this window? I want to see how much time it took last time. I think it took about 78 seconds. This time it took 175 seconds. I just want to comment. This is 175.031. And what was the previous time? Can you scroll up also? Just curious. We can see? Yeah. Gone. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So it copies the data. It's, it's not just doing the copying the data here. It's like disk duplication here. How do I explain? It's taking the entire disk and copying over to the another disk. So can you? Can you run one more command, please? Just do this ls and do a more or less something. I want to see if there's any file before the f. What do you mean? Uh, can you run less, uh, run the ls command with the more? Well, which command? ls no, pipe more. No, it, what is the command, by the way, you see? Uh, oh, you want it run here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, start with the F1. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to see there was a folder called Zuffer in this one before. Where did that Zuffer folder go? So, the F1 okay. right over it. It's doing so, this duplication. Whatever you have in the only input disk, and then the output is going to write over. So all the data that will be on the uh, output file, that will be gone? Oh, yes. So we just transfer the data from SD1 to SD2. No, we, we didn't do a data transfer. We did a disk duplication here. So what we did is uh, here, uh, Let's see here. So basically, we wiped out all the data, make it blank, and then transfer everything from the CD, uh, SPC1 to SPC2. Exactly. So, okay. what happens is we have two disks here. And uh, so this has a, like, this is disk one and this is do, disk two, right? So it's going to be doing the exact replica. So will be this command will be uh, this one is uh, like blue color here and this two suppose it was like uh, yellow no this one and this one was yellow right so when we do that dd command it's gonna make it exact replica and it will make it this one here it will be exact replica from top to bottom. Okay. So the, even though we didn't run, we didn't force it to run, it didn't give any error, any confirmation thing that you really want to overwrite it, clean it, wipe it? No. No yeah. Okay. It just writes over it. Good to know. So Thank you very much. I'm just wondering what is the purpose to running that? I mean, just to make it a duplicate? Yeah. Or just, no. just to make a duplicate here, what you could do is... If you have a other two disk here, if you want to do a data backup or a receiver, and that disk is not booting up or it's corrupted, you could run this command. 
and all the data from the other disk will copy over to the other disk. I think we can uh, make a backup with uh, TAR as well. Or is it this thread is better? Okay. Tell me what do you see here. All the files that are moving in the is the mount is Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay. Now you see the difference? need to figure it. Okay, hold on, let me clear it and we do it again. So that even changed the file system also. Exactly. Oh, okay. And then only 4 GB is usable. I think SDC is 10 GB, right? SDC 2 is 10 GB. SDC 2 is... Uh, 8 GB. 8 GB. Yes. So we copied 1 to 2, right? Yeah. So 4 GB is being wasted here. So they did that though? It's there, but it did uh, du this duplicate from the... Oh, I see. Uh, FDC 1 to FDC 2, so that's what it's doing here. FDC 2 is still there. I mean, the 8 GB is still there. No, but when we look on the first command, which is df-ht, it says FDC 2 capacity is also 4 GB. So it's going to rewrite over this, and then if it's... Uh, so this is... Uh, Okay, so this is how it is. So if we got over everything here, then it's going to leave the 4 GB, uh, 2 GB unusable here. So this is 8 GB, 4 GB, right? No, that's 4 GB. And this is 4 GB, 4 GB too. And the 8 GB, another 4 GB is unusable. Okay, so you just have to keep in mind if you want to do. It's good to it's good to keep the receiving end bigger size than the copying size. If the copying size is bigger than the receiving size, it does not work. So usually, you you use this command um, to do the disk duplication. And uh, you use this command, use this command if you are recycling the disk. Okay, so if you are recycling the disk, uh, you do dd input file equal to slash dev slash zero output file equals to slash dev slash sdc one. Okay, and when you hit enter, it's going to write all the DC one, and and then you and then you will be able to dispose this disk. Usually, you usually you, you run this command when you, when the disk is up on your computer, and you're sending it back to the main system. Is there any way, are there any tools in a Linux available or something that? they can retrieve the previous data in case there are some confidential data into the uh, disk before we run this command. I, I suppose they are. But when I work for um, Apple, you know what they're doing? The harvest and they were shredding it. They they were shredding the old hard drive instead of sending it back to the manufacturer. They 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 want to take no chance. They were taking the hard drive and putting it in the shredder, hard drive shredder. 
So that's what I'm saying. That's an exception. Not the exception there, but the case that company has a big money and they can destroy their own thing. But this is what we're talking about is a leasing thing that we need to return back to the manufacturer because we leased it. Yeah, I mean, this is a very powerful tool, but it's not full. Uh, I mean, once you run this, yeah, it's going to be very difficult to retrieve the data, but some, uh, uh, when I worked for Apple, they, did, uh, they shredded it. Nothing leaves the work. A hardware could come inside the company, it cannot go outside. That's what I'm saying. So, Maybe they were uh, hysterical about losing the data, you know. Who knows? But I think every every company keeps like a replica. So I mean, it's gonna it might take time to get it back. Yeah, they they keep a replica and then they try to reuse it so that it stays within the company bounds or they put it back it up on the tape. And uh, they do details. And as well as, like, they take the snapshots as well, like, as you said, from the VMware? Yeah. Even if it gets corrupted, like, after one minute, or so the last minute when it's saved, or maybe whatever they schedule, they set it off for the snapshots. But if you run this command here, this command usually is very effective. It's going to be very, very hard to... Replicate and get the data. Okay, so it could be a data command network. Yeah, to destroy. To destroy the data, you run this command and uh, replica. this command replica and then uh, if you want to create a very large file you use this command. Okay and you don't need this visual right you okay. With this here um so with this command, or with this command, actually the partitions, all the partitions also, all the partitions also copy over. Okay, so let me clear this. Uh, Okay, so we have a LDD here, right? So let me quickly make two partitions here. Okay, let's uh, let me use LDE because LD is a smaller size, right? Or hold on. Uh, SDC, we have two partition here, SDC1, SDC2, right? So, I'm going to copy this entire disk to SDD, okay? So, let's do that. DD, input file, equal, slash, S, uh, dev, slash, SDC. Output file equal slash dev s d d. So what it's going to do is, if it's going to have partition or not, everything is going to replicate and then put it on here. So, oh, we are out of time here. Oh, no, we are If it if this finishes in five minutes, then it's good. Then if not, then we'll drop off.
Well, I'll get tips like we only did the one partition last time. I think two minutes? Yeah, for 4 GB it took uh, two minutes. Two minutes. And then this time we're doing it maybe four, four partitions. One, two, three, four. So whatever, like it has DC, moving, side, swap. Yeah. You, just you should create uh, all these partitions like this. Everything as oh, okay. SDB, SDB one, SDB two, three, and C. We'll see if it's gonna keep the lettering too. Oh, okay.